up the ante a little bit with um, technology and uh, things that we do around um, here. Recently I started using my uh, fourth axis or the A axis, uh, mounted it on the machine and uh, immediately had some problems. That same uh, photograph of Hogwarts uh, I decided to convert into a, a rotary axis and uh, if you can pick that out it's absolutely awful. Uh, it uh, stretched the whole thing out, it's gone out of focus. Here's the spire here and made a bit of a mess of it. And after a bit of investigation uh, a lot of investigation actually. Um, what I found out was that, uh, and you won't find this on, out on the internet because I've heard a lot of guys on there talking um, and they're saying that the, oh, the fourth axis actually works uh, in degrees. Well it doesn't. The fourth axis and the machine doesn't know whether it's a flat object or a circular object. Uh, when you write or when you convert the program into a G file, it's still flat. What the program actually does is alter the millimeters per pulse of the compute that the computer sends, um, or the bandwidth then that uh, the, the motor receives. So it actually alters the um, the motor parameters to suit the actual diameter of whatever you, you, you have in here. Uh, just for, say for example if you are uh, uh, machining a, this is 110 millimeter uh, in diameter which is 345 uh, millimeters circumference, um, what it will do is alter the parameters of the motor for one revolution. The distance it will travel on the surface is 345 millimeters. So if you keep that in mind, you can actually alter the motor parameters yourself. And um, for every each diameter, you have to work out um, the distance of the circumference um, in relation to the motor parameters. Now I'm sure you've all set up your motor parameters just play around so, with them. So there you are. Uh, it's, uh, it's a matter of, um, of just playing around with motor parameters and um, I'm sure you'll find it yourself. Anyway, problem I had, um, this is just uh, ordinary water pipe. Uh, if you can pick this up with the camera uh, it's actually pierced through here. Now this was supposedly uh, maximum depth of 1.2 millimeters and um, this is two millimeters in thickness and it punched through and I did it three times <laughs> on three different pieces of material. So what I did was I got my DTI um, run it on here, run the z-axis and found that this was running out approximately a millimeter. So um, uh, what I actually found out was that I actually need these to hold the pipe in, uh, in between the center, uh, the, the tailstock and the chuck and using wood for this type of job is a bad idea. <laughs> So um, I went a little bit more professional and made some nylon ones. Um, these will work absolutely perfectly. I've checked them on the machine, uh, uh, run them up on the lathe and uh, checked them on the machine rather and um, they're perfect. So this new piece now should run absolutely perfect and true. Um, to show you the sort of result um, that a lithothane will have on, on this sort of material, I'll just put up uh, one that I, I actually did do earlier uh, out of this big stuff, but I didn't film it. But I will one day film it. Um, and I'll put that up right now.
So, yes, we'll put this piece of material in now and we will cut the lithothane on it and hopefully make a lamp and everything will be right. So We've got that set up now on the fourth axis. Now then, connecting the fourth axis up is fairly, fairly easy actually. Um, it's the panel on the side. Uh, there's a plug here. This is the plug from the CN, uh, from the fourth axis. Uh, but first of all, you need to open up the side, come inside to this one here, pull this plug, and put this one in its in. place. It's awkward holding the camera, seeing what it sees, and trying to line these plugs up. that. This then will only go in one position, which is there. So that's in, and now we're ready to uh, put the right tool in and zero it all up and set it going. Of course what you also need to do before you plug your fourth axis in is centre this or dead centre of your uh, rotary device, which I didn't do, so here we go. And we'll... So I've got an actual mark on here, which gives me the exact centre and really only it only needs to be sort of close by eye not really near enough is good enough but you can do it within a millimetre so we will we don't have to centre that or anything because we're going to now disconnect this and um, connect the fourth axis up 